Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. And in this video, we are going to learn the Fibonacci pattern and how to script it within Python in Blender. Uh, you can do this outside of Blender. Um, so you might be wondering why we're doing it inside Blender. Well, it's mainly to get to you get to know and how learn how to use the console, as well as um, learning how to manipulate numbers so that we can use them within Blender. Because this is actually something that's really cool, the Fibonacci pattern. I don't know if it's very useful in like what you want to create a lot of the times, but you can create patterns similar to this to manipulate manipulate objects within Blender. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started. So we're going to do a function. Uh, this is the Fibonacci pattern right here. It's, it starts with a 0 and a 1, and everything is based off of that. First off, it just goes 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And so on. Um, so yeah, this is not, not too bad, really. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to create a function so that we can just call Fibonacci and put a number in here. And it will keep running and we'll keep printing out numbers that follow the Fibonacci pattern until the number is a certain number. So like in this situation, it would, could be like a 35. So it would be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, stop, because it can't go above 35. Uh, so let's put this back to a 1,000 for now. Uh, so this is our goal, to be able to just call this within our console and have it just work. So let's type in fib, uh, define Fibonacci, and I'm just going to type in A. This is the way you define functions within Python. And just hit enter, and you'll notice that it tabs in, and that's because Python is space dependent, uh, meaning if you were to backspace, it wouldn't work. It needs to be on that space right there. So now we just begin typing our function for the Fibonacci pattern. Uh, I'm just going to make an x is equal to 0 and a y is equal to 1. Uh, just because those are a base case type thing, like it's our very first point and everything builds off of it. So we just need something to start with there. And then we're going to create a while loop where x is less than a. So essentially we're just going to say that this is going to be x, every one of these numbers is going to be labeled x at one point or another. We're going to name, well, this is going to be x, this is y for the first time up to this point, and then after we get into the while loop, this will become the x, and this will become the y, and this will become the x, and then this will become the y, and so on. x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. And then, because we do it this way, we can say x plus y is equal to x plus y is equal to x plus y. Uh, and you can see I kind of like left it. I didn't. It's because they're going to be equal to each other. I don't know if this is making sense. So 1 plus 0 is 1. x plus y, or x plus y, is x. is y. Oh, that's why it makes sense. My bad. Hopefully that didn't confuse you. x plus y is the new y. And this is going to be called x again. And then this is going to be x plus y is y. Name this x. x plus y is y. Name this x. x plus y is y. Name this x. And so on. So let's go into the while loop and let's start doing that. Uh, let's let's first off print what we have because we want to print the zero and the one. So let's print x, and we only want to ever print x. And let's uh, let's print a, just a blank space underneath it. And there's probably a better way to do that, but this is the easiest way to show you as well. Uh, so now we just need to do a is equal to. Uh, let's start off with let's do b is equal to y is equal to x plus b, y, yes. 
sorry, I was thinking a plus b, but this is right here, our a, so that we don't want to make sure you don't do that. So we're saying x plus y is y. X plus y is y. But we have a little bit of a problem. Don't hit enter yet. We have a little bit of a problem. Uh, if we name this our y, so for instance in this situation, our y is now 2. How do we name our x what it is previously? Well, in Python, there's this really cool thing that you can do where you can just say x comma y and you can name what your what you want your x to be at the exact time and not have it be modified when it is called so now we can just say y comma this so now it's not going to do this in sequence it's not going to say x equals y and then y is equal to this what this is really going to say is x and y are equal to y and x plus y so that you don't have to worry about this double after you after you rename the y then how do you call the y in the next line because you want the original y I don't know if this makes any I don't know if that came across the way I wanted to but essentially if you were to do this on two different lines you would have the problem of your variables being named incorrectly in any iteration just because they'd be renamed and then renamed again and so forth. It just won't work. And then we hit enter. And then we can hit enter again and that will bring us all the way back to our normal console. And here comes the moment of truth. We should be able to type in Fibonacci. Uh, and let's just, because we have our test case up here, we already know what the Fibonacci pattern is up to, 35, to 34. Let's plug in 35. And what do we get? We get a 0, we get a 1, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 5, an 8, a 13, a 21, and 34. So I'm going to scroll up right here just so you can see this again. Uh, if you want to just copy this down or you can type it up. This is really cool because you can now manipulate this and do things on your own using a, a similar technique where you would just define a function and then you would call it. And the cool thing about this is, is we can now call this to be for a thousand and it will give us all of them. We can literally go as big as we want and it will give us all the numbers that we could imagine. So maybe I should actually do this like this. Now you can actually see it. I hope that you would be able to see the before but there you go. Uh, good luck with your Fibonacci patterns and all your other Blender creations. Um, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I uh, hope to see you next time on Blender Know How. Good luck with Python.